So we're talking about an all-time job. We're in an all-time job market, all-time, right? Generational job market happening right now. If you are not learning skills in your job, if your boss is an asshole, if whatever reason, leave now. Go start to get the skills that you need so if and when the next kind of recession. Of course 2008 will happen again. Yeah, yes, this is how the world and economy works. Things go really well. I mean, and we're way, way, if you look at like what, what's happened like the last 40 years, we're way, 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 way overdue. Like it should have happened like two years, two, three years ago. So it'll happen. I'm, I'm not, I don't know when it'll happen. I mean, right now things are continuing to crank. You know, the, the things that start to make you nervous again are when you see we're starting to do the same types of mortgages again and people have more college debt than they had in 2008. And I think that that recipe together, Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk, he, Gary talks about this actually a lot. Like, I think that is what, that could be the powder keg. So you couple someone coming now that they didn't have 10, 15 years ago with 200,000 in debt, getting a $800,000 mortgage, getting a you know, brand new car, uh, with a job that pays like 70,000, 60,000, 50,000 dollars out of college, like ugh, yeah. probably, pro it, it, there will just be a time of reckoning again um, and we just keep repeating the same mistakes over and over. How can we avoid the next recession and what can the biggest organizations in the world, what can their leaders do to like play their part in helping to avoid the next economic downturn? I don't think we should, I, I, like, it's not avoid, you can't avoid it. Like, there's no point in saying like, what can we do to avoid it? Like, it will happen. It's like life and death. You can't, there's no avoiding it. It, it will happen, it's inevitable. Like, there's always like, we live in a world of yin and yang. Like, it, it, so to me like that, it's less, I, I would say for this question, to me it's less important about like, will it happen? It's what can you do to, to recession proof? To me as a, a sales leader in particular, what you can do to recession proof your team is to really invest in the soft skills of selling. And what I mean by that is, what does it actually mean to be consultative? What does it actually mean to talk about the value that you provide versus the product? Because what, what starts to happen is the teams that win, that, that I saw back, again, when I lived through the last recession, and I saw the sales teams that won historically were teams that knew how to talk about the business, the value, the impact, regardless of the product. Um, so you really have to make sure that your sales team really has the skills that they need to be recession proof. And to me, those are those soft, those are the behavioral psychology, the sociology skills, really understand why people behave the way that they behave and really investing in the soft skills in particular, that's gonna be really, really critical because as people, as budgets start to shrink, your salespeople are gonna to have to start to create needs. You know, you've gotta create a little bit more fear, uncertainty, doubt, those types of things, like when the market's tough. When everyone's out there buying, your salespeople don't have to be that great. But man, when the market starts to condense, your salespeople better know how to create need. Hey, I'm calling in like, oh, timing's not great. Okay, bye, right? Like, I've gotta be able to say, look, so Emily, like what happens when you don't solve this problem? Like, what's that gonna do to marketing in three, six, 12 months if you're not able to do that? Well, it'll be this, but like, no, Emily, like, let's talk about it. So like, I think salespeople are gonna have to really focus on what it means to be a salesperson, which is how do I create a need? How do I provide value? And, and that's where gonna be the, the companies that win and the companies that don't. You know, Challenger Sale talks about this a little bit, but I think it's a little bit more nuanced than that. It's about, I've got to create, I've got to light a fire. I've got to create a need. And the company, the sales workers that do will win. The ones that don't will fail. Not because the product's bad, because they're not, you, they didn't adapt fast enough. You know, look, I, I probably talk to you on a monthly basis between 50 and 100 venture back companies. And the companies that are getting funding and the, the value, if you look at what's happening, even at seed round, the amount of seed funds that have popped up over the last four years, I'm an investor in one stage two capital is huge. And you're seeing that there's a lot of noise in the market, um, you know, and a lot of people getting money that maybe shouldn't be getting money. I think, I think marketing and sales organizations, the issue when, when times are fat, like they are right now, unemployment at an all time low, spending at a high. I mean, look at what's happening with venture capital funding. Like, you know, do you have two dudes in a dream? Did one of them go to Stanford? Here's like $5 million. As when times are fat, people get lazy on sales and marketing. Because almost anything, like all they have to do is have like a good video or something and like things will just work naturally. The salespeople, you know, are used to just calling in, hey, I'm with this space. People have more discretionary budget. 
than they've had in past years. So people are spending more freely. So I, I don't know when it's gonna come. I think, you know, for me, the things that are exciting about it is it eliminates a lot of the, like, the noise from the market. You know, you gotta be good, you gotta be better. When the last housing, you know, in 2008, 2009, 2010, I was selling, I was like career builder and I had the best two years ever. Like, and I'm so, imagine like nobody was hiring and we're selling job ads, right, and resume database. So I think really you have to be good, which for me is exciting. So for you, it's like an opportunity to like prove yourself, but how, what about people who are like freaked out and afraid? Like how do you deal with Get better, it? get better. Be better at what you do. Like that's the only way to, the only way to avoid it is be better. Like you know, you know where the areas are, like you're probably good at whatever it is, but that's the only way to do it. You have to, you have to be better. You can't ever stop moving forward. Or you can't ever stop growing. How do you do that? Uh, it, I just you're like get better. And I'm like, yeah, but like, there's gotta be, a, there's gotta be a point somewhere in there. Yeah. Like that is the solution, but where's the in between? Part of it is just, you have to have a different mindset about just how you look at failure or how you look at yourself. And I think, and also just really understanding just how long life is and how impermanent all situations are. I think it, it, it is one of the biggest benefits of getting older. Like as a benefit now of being 39 is I've seen this fucking movie a couple of times now. Like I know that, you know what, this thing happened, but you know what, I've, it's, it's happened seven other times and it always ended up okay. Oh, that person disappointed me, everything's gonna be fine. Oh, that thing happened, it's all gonna be fine. So I think it just, once you have a chance to see it, and I think you, you don't have to get older to understand that, um, but I think a lot of people don't want to, you know, like we feel it so deeply when it happens as opposed to being able to see like, look, you'll get over it over time. That nothing is like really that serious. There's very, very few things that are gonna like really be like the end of the world situations. The benefit of being older is you get a chance to really see that play out even just for like a little bit. And I'm sure when I'm 50, I'm gonna be like, dude, remember all the dumb shit you used to stress about when you were 39? What can a VP of sales start prepping their team with now? You know, I, I've talked a lot about this around the whole role of sales development. And is sales development really preparing you for anything? You know, it's like, we're training these people to just like set appointments. And then your next job is in sales? Like sales is having a conversation, running a discovery. Like, like I, would, I would ask you to get better and examine the work that you're doing now. Are you actually learning a skill that you're like, man, this is gonna help me to do these other seven things. Like there's no doubt, setting meetings, cold calling, there's a lot of value you're gonna get for that. Once you get that down, like, and if you really wanna be in sales, there's probably other paths to get there. So I think I would just be really smart about the skills that you're learning right now, because, you know, again, if, if it happens and in, it's two years later, and you don't have the skills that you think you need to get to that next level, it's gonna be real tough. It's gonna to be hard. And you're just gonna probably have to just stay with like that same job for maybe a little bit longer, as opposed to where people aren't willing to take as much of a chance because unemployment's higher. You know, unemployment right now is like, what, at like the lowest level since like the 60s or some shit? It's fucking, it's wild. You know, my advice for anyone is the employment market has never been better. Unemployment has been at an all time low since like the 60s. Right? So we're talking about an all time job. We're in an all time job market, all time, right? Generational job market happening right now. If you are not learning skills in your job, if your boss is an asshole, if whatever reason, leave now. Go start to get the skills that you need. So if and when the next kind of recession or whatever happens, you've been able to level up. You're at a better company. You're in a better situation. Don't just stay in the situation that you're in. Go find a job that's gonna get you the skills, a leader that you believe in, right? Go find like the best place for you now while you can, right? Because these companies that are hiring at record clips right now, you know, look, take us, right? We've almost 3 x employee size over the last, you know, four months, right? And I think it's because like to talents there, the money's flowing, but it, I know it won't always be that way. So now is the time to take your chance. You know, and I'd say that's for a CEO, just the same it is for a person with two to five years of experience.